would like to give a little more visual explanation of the equations, right? That was a lot of mathematics, as um, some people like it. <laughs> um, but this is the, the visual explanation of what's going on. So on the left hand side figure, uh, there's a timing diagram. Uh, the left column of the time, timing diagram should have been labeled initiator, uh, and then the right hand column would have been enabled or, or labeled reflector. Um, so sorry for the missing labels. Uh, but what happens in time is on frequency one, indicated by the blue sine wave, uh, the initiator is sending a phase to the reflector, and then the reflector sends it back. Um, and the two clocks indicate that the the PLLs have an initial starting state that are not equal and identical. Uh, but again, because of the two-way nature of the tone exchange, though there are terms end up getting canceled out. Um, and then immediately after that step is completed, that would be one of the phase-based ranging steps, there would be a frequency change time uh, between the red and the blue. Uh, and then the process is repeated on a different frequency. And then the, the figure the reason that's important, I should say, is if you have a single phase measurement, uh, that can be incredibly accurate with Bluetooth devices. Um, many Bluetooth devices have very low transmit phase noise and very high receive uh, sensitivity in terms of phase measurements. So you can get measurement systems that uh, in a clean environment are less than six degrees of measurement error. And if you think about a Bluetooth wave is about 12.5 centimeters long, if you can measure the rotation of a phase down to six degrees, that's six divided by 360 times the 12 centimeters, 12 and a half centimeters, it's millimeters of resolution is the actual capability of Bluetooth devices. And as Paul mentioned, uh, in multi-path environments, we have a limit of 80 megahertz of bandwidth. So in multi-path uh, environments, you can have uh, the ability to separate multipath by about 1.8 meters uh, because of the radar equation without resorting to using uh, more complex techniques like super resolution algorithms or, or so on and so forth. But the actual measurement capability, fundamental measuring capability, phase space ranging is incredibly precise um, in, with, with, good, with good quality devices. Uh, and then why we need to repeat this across multiple frequencies is if you take a very precise phase measurement, that gives you an answer that's very precise, but it's also ambiguous because it's a modulo uh, equation, right? Phases wrap around every two pi or 360 degrees. So that means in terms of a wave, uh, when you get a distance on a single frequency uh, and say it's six centimeters, it could be six centimeters or 18 centimeters uh, or 24 centimeters and so on and so forth, right? So there's an ambiguity in terms of the distance. But when you repeat it across multiple frequencies, the physics change, and that's the diagram on the right. The diagram on the right shows, uh, let me make sure I get my colors right, the, the blue signals the 2.4 gigahertz, the, uh, the, blue, the blue signal is uh, 2.4 gigahertz, the lowest frequency in the ISM band. And the red signal is 2.48 gigahertz, which is the highest frequency in the ISM band. And this is as if the waves have propagated from zero to uh, 0 0.5 meters. And it's very easy to see that the, the waves start to disperse, and they disperse more as the distance increases. And that's basically saying that there is a delta phase relationship between these two waves that is dependent on the delta frequency and the change in distance. So there's a linear, a linear relationship between delta phase and delta frequency.